Hi there, I'm Tyler and today we are going to build what we are calling the world's greatest swing set. It's probably not the world's greatest, but it's pretty gnarly. Let's have a look. This swing set has got everything on it. It's got a wavy slide, easily climbable stairs, got a ladder to the second side, got a climbing wall, got a climbing rope, benches on the inside, a steering wheel, stairs on the inside, sweet roof on the top, fantastic view, at least at our house, second upper level, sweet pair of binoculars, spinny tube slide, I'm not gonna go that one. I might be a little big for this one. It's got a bridge from one side to the other. If you don't wanna take the bridge, you can do the monkey bars. It's got swings, four of them. Long story short, this thing is absolutely awesome. The kids and their friends have not stopped playing on this since it's been built, and it's only been finished for a short amount of time. This is not a very complicated build, but there are a lot of parts. I have put together a highly detailed colored set of plans that are for purchase. Any purchases you do make help out the channel immensely. There is a link in the description to my website where you can purchase those plans. I do got to say if you build it based off my plans, you guys are claiming full responsibility for the build and any actions that might happen on the swing set because of it. This swing set took me about 30 hours to build. If I was to do it again, it would be less because I've ironed out any details in the original design and they are updated in the plans that you guys are purchased so you shouldn't run into any issues. This swing set, all the accessories, slides, swings, binoculars, steering wheel included, cost $2,300 to build. That pricing will vary a little bit based on the cost of lumber in your area. And there's links to all of the stuff that you need in the plans as well. So let's get started building this. This is gonna be a two part series video. Hopefully the second video isn't too long if I gotta squeeze in a little bit more data at the end that I needed to fit in. And when you guys purchase the plans, there will be QR codes that you can scan with your phone if you're having a little bit of trouble with that particular stage of the build. You can scan it with your phone and watch me build it right out here. If you're watching the first video here, be sure to check out the second video. Link right up there and in the description below when it's released. Hope you guys enjoyed this and let's build this thing. Do you have my plans printed out here? Here's the bill of material and the lumber and quantities. And I put them in a little binder so hopefully they don't totally blow away on me. I'm gonna start with the house side of the swing set and with the different floor sections that you see here. I'm gonna cut all these out using the cordless miter saw and then we'll start with this one and put the legs on from there. A quick word of warning for anyone that might try to screenshot the pictures of the plans throughout the video here. The plans have been modified since then, so you will have a wonky swing set if you try to build off of those. Just a word of warning. You carry up that part and I carry up the other part. Okay. All the pieces cut out only took a few minutes. I do just want to note that make sure you have the right board, the 63 and a half inch board on the outside of the 67 inch board so that you don't throw all the measurements for the rest of the playhouse out of whack. I do think that I'm going to build this bottom frame and then we'll set the 4x4s in and bolt them into place and then we will put the outside frame in place on the lower and upper levels and then we'll add in the joist once it's in place so we don't have to lift all of that weight into place. Once you get the base frame together, be sure to measure for square by measuring diagonally across from each corner. Once you do have it in square, use the level to make sure you have the base of this swing set as level as you can possibly get it because everything is going to be built off of this base and like always, you want a strong base to start with. I'm going to make two marks on each of these four 4x4s four and these marks are to the bottom of the rim joist that will be installed to hold the floors in place.
I'm going to assemble each side of the house portion in different sections on the ground just like you would be doing when you would build a wall. And I'm laying these out to the proper width using the base section as reference. Using the marking lines as reference I lay out the room joist and screw one screw in each corner. Once I have those screws in place I can adjust the whole assembly to align properly with the base section which we know is square and this allows me to easily square up the entire side and then I add the remaining screws. To make things easier while I'm lifting each side I'm adding a few screws in the bottom of the base section so that they are ready to drive into the 4x4s once I have them up and level in place. The remaining two rim joists are just long enough that they're a little bit too hard to handle on my own, so I'm putting a clamp on one side, driving a screw on the opposite corner, and then I will go to the other side to make sure everything is nice and plumb and drive the remaining screws. In each of these corners, I'm going to put four two and a half inch deck screws, and then I'm going to put a four inch structural screw, which is the equivalent of a lag bolt. These are five sixteenths by four inches long with a T30 bit on them, and they're absolutely incredible. They're not exactly cheap, but the time you're going to save putting them in, these things are golden. not going anywhere. So we got the main 4x4s up and I got the face room with the bottom level on. Now I'm going to put the joist in. If you look at the plans, we're going to look at it from this side. So we want to make our measurements from the right hand corner. So we got to put it in the three joists in at these measurements. While we've got a quiet moment while I'm measuring out the distances for the joist, I do want to make a point that if you see me drive one or two screws, that is not usually the case. Usually there's more screws, but it's not very exciting. Refer to the plans for the proper amount of screws you should be using. The plan now is we will take some deck boards, cut them to the length that we need, and do the first floor of the first tower. Then we'll move over to the second tower, do the same thing, put up the floors, put decking on the first floor, so that we can get the bridge trusses up without actually having to step on a ladder at all. Much safer, probably a little bit easier. Each of these deck boards are held down with 10 2 and a half inch deck screws, two per joist. Once we had a solid platform to stand on, we added the two remaining rim joists to the top level of the tower. Yeah. Well, it's probably just Now that we got some decking on this side and we can actually stand up there, you want to make sure you get the proper structural bolts in all areas of the upper joist. What we're going to do now is jump over to this side since I have some help and build the second tower, which I am calling yeah. the fort tower. Up to the point that you see the first tower built, the second tower is exactly the same. So just follow those steps and assemble as quick as you can. Yeah. 
So there we got our two towers. In my opinion, probably the coolest part about this entire swing set is from the top level to the top level is a bridge. So cool. Who has a bridge? We have one over here now, so that'll be super exciting. But before we put that up, I want to drill the holes for the monkey bars, which are going to be underneath the bridge in between the beams so that we can put it all up in one piece and not have to manhandle it together while we're standing up there on the platforms. Here you can see the plan page for the monkey bar slash bridge. The bridge basically goes on top of the monkey bar section. And this is going to be three quarter inch EMT conduit. We're going to drill these holes at these different sequences measuring from one side and all of the holes are one and three quarter inches deep. I'm going to drill those with a spade bit so I don't mess up a nice Forstner bit in this pressure treated wood. At least in my case, the 4x6s purchased for the bridge trusses were a hair over 12 foot long. I used my circular saw to trim them down to exactly 144 inches. Once both boards were the same length, we lined them up right next to each other and made the marks for the monkey bar pilot holes. The monkey bars themselves are actually going to be made from 3 quarter inch EMT conduit that I cut using an angle grinder. I suppose you could probably assemble this monkey bar section yourself, but it certainly was helpful to have a few helping hands from my brothers. explain a little bit what's going on here now this is the monkey bar slash bridge slash swing beam which will be the front one and we don't have all of the walking boards on it right now just for weight sake but now we got to lift it up onto the top here and what I've done is added this little strip that I just screwed into the bottom there and that will allow us to get the beam up there and rest it on there so we don't have to hold it while we're trying to manhandle it into place and then i've also measured and marked so we know where the screws are we can get those pre-run and then we'll get it lifted up into place dry some screws and then we'll put some uh joist hangers in there as well And without doubt, you will need a few helping hands to get the bridge in place. It is not light. And boy, do I like it when a plan comes together. This thing fit perfectly the first time. Currently, the only thing holding up these beams are the structural screws and regular deck screws through the end grain of the board, and that's not very strong. I'm gonna use four angle brackets on the inside to add some structural support. This will add a lot of support because it's side grain using screws. And then as we progress further with the build, there'll be a four by four on either side that'll be the railing. We'll put a bunch of structural screws in that. This thing will be solid as can be. Turns out we have just enough room in the off cuts from these boards to do these angles, which I have them in the plans on both sides, but I believe on our swing set that over here, we're actually gonna enclose it into a little bit of a playhouse. So I'm not gonna put these supports over here. But again, you can get those out of the scrap pieces from the joist section. Now that we got a solid base built and the bridge trusses are installed so that we don't need the freedom to move around like we did before, it is time to install the remaining joist in both towers.
So we just put in all of the upper joist on the fort side and these two boards on the house side. So now I'm going to add these different sections in here, which is where the steps come up over on this end. Once all your joists are installed, go back through and install a joist hanger on each one of them for added strength and security for your children. Well there we are. I think that's a good place to end the first of these two videos. We've got the main structure put together. The rest of it, which is still a lot of work, is putting up the railings, putting all the accessories on, and finishing up all of the decking, which will be in part two of the world's greatest swing set build. Hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this big build. If you're just watching the first video and the second video is already released, be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description below so you can see the final stages of building this project. If you're here watching the first video, be sure to check back next week where I'll see you. I'm DIY Tyler, you guys have a good one.